record, rank, and publish is really the food of cats. And too many cross-country coaches never measure anything in practice. I think it's crazy. We measure everything. We measure, this is a 23-second drill. Just an idea for you. We've done this for 13 years now. And we see how far a guy can go in 23 seconds. And we keep track of the best freshmen, the best sophomores, the best juniors, the best seniors. The guys in yellow are guys that were on this year's team. We have a very young team. That's why they're not in the top 10. Uh, but, but those guys, I mean, we have a lot of yellow in the freshman, sophomore, and junior classes. So they're going to be really good next year. The guys in red are all state athletes. What I'm trying to do here is juxtapose guys are on our team and what they are doing compared to what the legends of our school have done. I don't care what you do. It could be uh, three one mile runs with a three minute rest and you add up the three times. You need to develop workouts in your program that's measurable and comparable. You know, something you could do in July, do it again in September, do it again in November, and then show guys the next year how they have changed, how much better they've become. The yearly plan basically is just chasing the two rabbits. First of all, June through November, you train for the 5,000. It's an endurance dominated program for six months. Now you still want to build athletes before practice. You want to build athleticism, but endurance is your overall focus. And then come the next six months, you train for the 800. You say, well, gee, you know, there's a 1600 and the 32. You've got that training for six months. Now you must flip the switch and get fast. And I can't tell you how much this will feed into every great 800 guy I've ever known was a fast cross-country athlete, period. They were not sprinters. They were fast cross-country athletes. So what you do for six months in cross-country will feed the 800 runner. But what your team will do if you're training them all to run fast 800s in the spring, that will carry over to a better athlete, a faster cross-country athlete come fall. I always like to uh, put out some recommended reading. Um, I love these six books. I, I don't know if any of them outside of the Twin Thieves is actually a coaching book. Matter of fact, look, no. The only book here that's a coaching book is the Twin Thieves, and that's about leadership. Steve Jones, my good friend, wrote that. If you don't know Steve Jones, you need to know him. The other five books are not coaching books, but I would argue they're performance books. Um, they're, they're books that will allow you to perform in life as a coach or an athlete um, the best you can perform. Thank you very much for attending today. And I think maybe Tyler will have some, some uh, open up for questions. Yeah. Uh, after an atomic speed workout, would you do a cross country workout? If yes, what type of workout would you do? Yes. It's totally up to you. Um, you know, I, I would see, you know, it, the atomic speed workout and the X factor workout is so minimal that it really is. <laughs> you could see it as a workout or a warm up. I mean, my, my guys leave every, speed workout, every X factor workout feeling better than they felt when they walked in, which I think is the perfect warm up. There are teams, there's a basketball team in Minnesota, a girls team that feeds the cats that literally did the speed workout on the day of a game. That just shows you, you know, do this atomic speed workout on the day of, it is a potentiator of whatever you do next. A potentiator is something that makes the next thing better. And uh, yeah, when you, I, I think the reason why it does that is that both X factor and speed is, is a CNS thing. It's, it's, it's pushing the CNS needle and the nervous system, of course, controls all movement. So if your CNS is primed, you're going to have a better 
cross country workout. I don't care if it's a long one, a short one, a fast one, no matter what you're doing, it works fine. All right. Last question. Uh, when are you suggesting the use of X factor workouts? Uh, is it, is a good day prior to an easy day of running? I know you kind of touched on it just, just a second ago. I, I don't think it matters because once again, I, I say that the X factor workout is an alternative to an off day. That's how minimal it is. When coaches say, describe what an X factor workout looks like. I say, if you walked into our field house, if I had three of my assistants there, we would have four stations. We would all be doing stuff for about 10 minutes. And you would see out of my 38 sprinters, maybe eight to 10 guys doing something and the other 30 guys standing around. It is a lot of standing around. However, when you see people doing stuff, they're jumping high, they're snappy, they're real intentional. You don't ever have to yell and scream for effort. You don't have to ever send somebody on a lap because they did a, a poor rep. No, they, they have rested enough where they're like, gee, if we only work for less than 100 seconds today, I better do the next five seconds hard. And so, so yeah, I, I, think, I think you have total flexibility on when you do it. Um, even though the speed workout has to be before a cross-country workout, it cannot be after, the X-factor work, could actually happen after the workout. I know Andy Dirks, my distance coach, um, that they, they will get done with the workout and they will finish with like hurdle over and unders. They will finish uh, doing um, uh, med ball work. They'll do uh, uh, mini hurdle work. Um, they'll have those stations after the workout. Uh, I think that's fine too. You know, uh, sometimes if, if we're only doing three, speed workouts in a week and we're not meeting any other time we will do a speed workout followed by 15 or 20 minutes of x um so i think you have total flexibility and the fact that there's no cost your guys are not going to be tired they're not going to be drained it's going to be the opposite they're going to be on fire and ready to work and now this stuff the improvements will grow like a tree um you have to be patient the first time you see somebody, probably half of all incoming cross-country runners can't even skip. And it, it, it's awful to watch. But damn it, they're going to learn how to skip. As long as you stay with it, they're going to learn how to skip. They're going to learn how to jump off of one leg and jump over a box. They're going to learn how to land and jump at the same time. All those things are going to start to happen. You know, I would encourage uh, every cross-country kid needs, whether it's in the X-Factor workout or not, they need to do push-ups. I mean, if, if they're not doing one set of push-ups every morning when they wake up, you're not teaching them how to be an athlete. Um, they need that hormonal response that comes from doing a set of push-ups. And it can be 10 at the start, you know, but eventually when they get down on the ground, they're going to do 40 because, uh, uh, because 10 will seem like too easy. But that's what we want. We want kids to become more athletic. Uh, last question, then we'll kind of wrap it up. Just uh, regarding the weight room and recommendations for when you should do a general strength routine. And then there's just another question kind of about, is it possible to build an athlete without using the weight room? And I think you kind of touched on that just now as well, but just kind of when, and is it an absolute necessity or, or could the X factor explosive power and body weight movements replace a weight room for someone that might not be comfortable in there? Or what are your thoughts on that? Two really good questions. Um, of my sprinters, I have, like I say, 38 of them. I'd say 19 of them are football players, and they lift their ass off. And the other 19 um, are encouraged to lift and encouraged to do push-ups, but I don't know. I do not see a difference in the performance mm -hmm. of the 19 lifters and the 19 non-lifters. So I do believe that sprinting it itself is an, the most underrated strength workout in the world i also believe that that you can get stronger with med balls and and lungy type things and and body weight stuff um there's no question that marines never touch a weight but they get strong as hell because they're doing push-ups and pull-ups and sit-ups and holding buckets of sand and other torturous things uh they get really strong without conventional lifting now the weight room is good strength is good 
I suggest that you're general in the weight room. There are no specific lifts in the weight room that magically translate to speed. There are no specific lifts that magically will help a cross country athlete. Uh, but general strength is good. So stay general, uh, do the pushes, do the pulls, do uh, deadlifts for sure, uh, Bulgarian squats, you know, single-legged stuff. Uh, change it up, stay general. But what I say is this, never let the weight room interfere with speed. Never let the weight room interfere with the sport. So if your guys are diminished by something you did in the weight room yesterday, you burn the steak. So don't burn the steak in the weight room. Stay general. Expose kids to a weight room. Expose them to strength. Let them get the little dose of, of, of testosterone that comes from uh, pushing the muscles a little harder than they're used to be, being pushed. And, and so the weight room is good. And I would schedule it probably, I mean, the weight room could take the place of an X-Factor workout. You could do it before practice on Tuesday. You say, well, that really ruined the workout, coach. Well, then you did too damn much in the weight room. Don't let it ruin the workout. Awesome, Tony. Thank you so much. And I appreciate everybody who was on today. And, and hopefully you're able to take something. And Tony is one of the most accessible guys that I've ever been around. And certainly we'll, we'll answer any more questions you have and, and guide you along the way if you want to in introduce some of these concepts. So thank you very much, sir. Thanks, everybody. Have a great clinic.